Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. You look like a professor, a lawyer in that high back chair. I love it, Jonathan. I feel very learned. I just need like wallpaper of books behind me. It's a much comfier chair with the back. Are you directing a choir tomorrow of maybe? (laughs) That's right. With my sweater that like blends into the chair. Nice choice, John. Gloria. I have many talents, and uh, conducting a choir is probably not one of them. <laughs> is it that? Does it take that much talent, Jonathan, to be like? You know, I don't claim to know. I'm a soloist through and through. Okay. in <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is Sunday, so you're very right with that religious text there. Yes. Okay. You, you could sing the banquet fugue together. You know, nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. All the things. All, all the, things. the things. Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry. Um, my boyfriend just walked out of the shower and that humidity just like... Oh, <laughs> nice. Yes. That's as he's thing. like and looks trying good, yeah. to like, you know, be on my desk as we film this. Like rude. Okay. <laughs> I don't care about you getting changed or anything. Okay. Anyway. So let's discuss this. Um, we had quite the eventful week. Jonathan... We touched a little bit about on the IOC ruling of Stolbova and Klimov, and it has just gone back and forth and back and forth since uh, this announcement was made. Buchan came out with his statement being like, I'm just as confused as you are. And you know, when you're in a sport like figure skating, it's a little bit different than... Uh, than you know, my favorite biathlon or, or when for when, several when, reasons or yeah. when we skate around the track because people become very emotive uh, mm-hmm. about um, the performers and they, they coddle uh, them, yes. hug them in tight, you know, right. and they're like, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know, you know, what he, and... I'm going to guess he knew that would be your response. Hence the reason he posted it. Yes. It's kind yeah. of like, I don't know if you noticed at a certain point, some POS was skating at um, Four Continents, and there was this shot of this woman from Chinese Taipei holding, like, a flag of one of the other countries from North America, being like, and it was like, thank you. And, like, I just yeah. felt like, oh, <laughs> these are skating fans, you know? Yeah. these are the diehards, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so there have been a couple of theories about Klimov, what had happened. Uh, well, Sobova, right? Oh, or Buchan, you mean? So, Buchan, sorry. Yeah. Stobova, Buchan. About Buchan, what had happened. I mean, obviously it affects Klimov also. Yeah. And my favorite was when um, uh, Tatiana and Max, mm-hmm. uh, Maxim Trenkov, when he made a post that he was sorry for Klimov that he got wrapped up in all of this. And he chose the shot. I don't know if you saw this. He chose the shot of um, him and Tatiana on the first place podium at the Olympics. And then just Klimov, he cut out Stolbova in that photo. And I was like, is that because she's the one who caused the problem? Or what does this mean here? <laughs> Do you I'm, not like I'm Stolbova? really waiting for Johnny Weir's response as a, as a noted Russian apologist and one who makes sure that he gets his shows in Russia. Uh, because I think he will say that this is... He is in a tough spot because he's supposed to be a broadcaster and have some professionalism and standards. But I assume that Johnny... Yeah. I mean, and he's one that knows full well what goes on. Uh, He is not new to skating or to uh, (laughs) the intricacies of... The scene, yeah. Yes. (laughs) He also trained at the Ice House with a cast of characters who are very open about different supplements that we take, shots that we take before the free dance and... All countries, right. you know, when certain right. people are involved, certain coaches. So, uh, in the ice dance event. So, I think that this is um, very interesting and how know, he'll navigate. Yeah. It. Obviously, I think that this is um, a wonderful, uh, not an book instinct, but I think overall the government's response is completely gaslighting and the gaslighting yeah. their people. Because the funniest thing is, um, my coach will watch all Russian news. And when Costner's boyfriend, um, the 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 race walker. You know he does that sport that I do around the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> when he uh, became, you know, came out that he had been doping and that she had covered up where he was for WADA with the testing, she's like, Dave, these people they doping. You cannot train, you know, yeah. every day, especially in the endurance sports, without some sort of, you know, enhancement. 
But then when it came out that the Russians were doping, she said, no, it's not true. Not yeah. true. <laughs> right? Yeah. And what's hilarious is you'll even see, like, people that will be defending the Russians and they'll be like, well, why isn't Kostner, um, you know, why isn't she banned? She doping. And it was like, no, no, no. She wasn't doping, but the boyfriend was. Although She wasn't even doping and she got such a harsh statement, much harsher than anyone in skating ever got. As Phil Hirsch yeah. would tell you, if Carolina was doping, I would hope that she'd be skating a little bit better than she did in <laughs> 2009 and 2010. Yeah, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't be pacing quite as much if she was doping. Jeez Louise. <laughs> but the funniest thing, um, I do think it's a big example of gaslighting where we have... Uh, by the hour, we were getting different statements, and you didn't know if they were going or not. But it takes right. all of the onus off of, wait, was there a doping program? People are so convinced this Anything is Anything but the issue at hand. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. The Russian people are so caught up in the hysteria of whether or not we're going and this is politics that they never even look into It's brilliant. It is yeah. really brilliant. Jenny's yeah. dad did a great uh, documentary about Putin and some of his... Um, tactics as far as um you know kind of gaslighting the people of how he uh does things and his statements and if you watch icarus and you see his statements of denials and strong mm -hmm. denials and we're like mm -hmm. lie to the camera to your face without wincing right. and it's very believable you're like yes scary. and how now we yeah. have our white house which sarah huckabee does it it's not quite as strong but you know, yeah, I would argue it's not strong at all. <laughs> well, she's in a tough spot, okay? That's she's not an easy spot. job, okay? She... Spot. Exactly. She... And she is dealing with issues far more grave than athletes <laughs> doping at the Olympics. <laughs> and people far less talented at this sort That's of right. thing. That's right. Yes. So, so, but now they did petition. To, to, uh, mm -hmm. help, me, help me understand so what they... So they petitioned to the Court of Arbitration of Sport in Switzerland. They have three judges on a panel... But you have to remember that they are getting testimony from Rodchenko, who's the initial whistleblower. We've gotten weird comments that he was the only source for the McLaren report, which is not true. He tipped no. them off, and then there was a widespread investigation. And then they found it all. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But they, there are people like Alexandra Antonovich who will be writing, he's the only one, you know, he's the only source. Not true, uh, but right. he was the whistleblower. So right. that is one of the whistleblowers. Um, right. Because obviously one of the a, initial ones that yeah. was the that was, was an the athlete big... who talked yeah. about the doping that she was on. And then there were uh, and she was in the German documentary. He came forward about the actual doping program. So this is how it started. to. Have move. you seen that German documentary that really shook everything up? I haven't seen it and I don't know if they have. Um, it's on subtitle. YouTube and you can you can auto subtitle it. So it's like one of the like we did with the interior, uh, the yeah. um, interior one. OK. Okay. I will find it. I will get it up there on our page for everyone. Okay. Unlike Dylan Moskovich, I will get it up in the lift and we will <laughs> all watch it together. Oh and my, more heartbreak. God. Okay. We'll get there. We'll <laughs> get there. Like, it's oh been my a God. long week, people. Um, yeah. But and a, long, a longer week for some of the skaters, perhaps. But the funny thing is I messaged Tiffany because the uh, Tiffany um, Zorsk, yeah, because all of the statements were going back and forth <laughs> where they were saying they weren't going to allow the alternates to compete, then they were. Well, then... I think there, as I understood it, which everyone mm -hmm. has their own interpretation of what's happening, is they were saying they would not now add new names to the list. So as I don't think we're doing like Pepita and Mozgov. Like, I don't think we're going to have to see that at the Olympics. Exactly. But they, they had put Tiffany and Jonathan's name undoubtedly on the list initially. So it's not quite a substitution yeah. to the list. It's just a substitution to their initial entries, right? I so love her they, hair so much. I have to tell you. That she gets a buy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> don't even care. She's okay. like slightly shady. Love everything about her. Okay. Uh, and I said, are you an Olympian? And she's like, I think so. We're not quite sure. So they're all in limbo. I obviously don't anticipate that um, the court will overturn. That would be very strange if the IOC It would be very strange out... and it would be very quick for that to happen. It, yeah. it would, I mean, because yeah. they're not the only... So there are a number of athletes. Uh, I think we said 39 the other day. Obviously, the count is higher now. Who are we mean like feeling? sports outside of figure skating? Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> okay. But there are a number of athletes. Uh, okay. I believe that they said that McLaren and Rodjenka would testify once for all of the cases so they're lumping okay. them in together you know who should be on this case 
Judge Rosemary Aqualita. I think that she would be um, the precise Rip person. Rip up the list, throw it away, yeah. <laughs> what, what a wonderful aspect of a hideous, yes. hideous oh. case. But could you imagine her with, I'm sorry, Ksenia. I saw your throw in 2013, and I saw it in 2014. And Would then you... again in 2015, which is <laughs> why I know. <laughs> and I've seen it in the last years. Would you yeah. like to explain? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Meldonium <clears throat> became legal as of midnight on New Year's. And then your skating ability has been in the pisser. Ever since. since. Ever yeah. since that time. Yeah. How would you like to explain? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Political. Okay. <laughs> uh, as far as Bukin goes, he's very confused. He's from a wonderful sporting family. As he wrote that letter... The open letter was... But here's the thing is, you know, when you decipher this, I don't care who your dad is. That has no bearing on whether or not you should be allowed into the... Like he all just of these... put in everything. He was put yeah. in the kitchen sink mm. of yeah, exactly. the sympathy points, okay? It was... Right. This has Which been... we've learned, you're not going to get any sympathy. What, what, what test is it? What did the test show? I think we have the right to know. He has the right to know. And no other information is really necessary. Now, there are conspiracy theories inside of Russia, which I do love. Okay. <laughs> about how the athletes have ha may have had word that this would come. Of course, Nina Moser. Love Nina. Love Elton. You know, she's very <laughs> outraged about all of this. It's a big conspiracy. And the funny thing is that, like, I genuinely like these people. I just think I don't necessarily trust them but i also don't think it's necessary they grew up in a culture of this so right. she says our team counts on sanity and changes in the ioc decisions that concern honest athletes who have the full right to compete in the olympic games and then she said figure skating is a very hard coordination sport and the use of doping only destructively affects the quality and ability of skating pause as you like to point out to demishiva right it's about endurance in the amount of training, not in the actual, like, yeah. building of muscle, per se. Especially yeah. because it's always been said that it is the team doctor associated with Moser. And somehow, someone will have to have some Russian experts with skating on, but somehow the ice dancers are still fall under Moser's team, somehow. So even when um, Elena Ilyenik was skating with... Uh, was skating with Ruslan, they were still a part of like Team Moser, whatever rink is, perhaps oh, like the skating club okay. or something. Okay. But it was that doctor who allegedly gave um, Bobrova a shot of the Meldonium the night before her free dance at Europeans that tipped everything off. When, okay. when they later came back and said that it was retroactively in her bloodstream. And then you have the Russians being like, um... Sure. There were okay. a lot of very nervous people, but they said that perhaps certain people when they, you know... Nikita was in uh, the Olympics. He was not really considered as an alternate for this. And it might right. have less to do with his free dance and more to do with other things. Because, again, we don't know which athletes were not approved if they right. weren't named as a on the Olympic team right. in all of this. So, <clears throat> right. So anyone who was in Sochi, you kind of have to... Those, those are the, the biggest red flags. I think that they, they were the first ones that were right. looked at. Right, agreed. Um, so Bukin, it could... It, based on how it's written, it's pretty strong that he either failed the test or somehow missed tests, drug tests, like out of competition. Whereas right. that's when the whole Costner situation, that would be... Well, when, and now here comes a whole bunch of stories. Oh, we just didn't know. Or, oh, you were... The, oh, he didn't update his, his contact. Come on now. These athletes are not idiots. <laughs> like, it, and it's also... It, it will, until the end of time, we will be saying that they didn't allow him because of epilepsy to compete at the Olympics. You know that this will eventually... Right. It will get, spin some spin. weird way. Because but I that's don't... Why the only thing to squash all of it is mm -hmm. for them to be transparent and when they testify to all 39 yeah. or whatever it is... But I don't think that it will be. I bet it'll be a yeah. closed hearing. You know okay. how these bodies of work go. Yeah. We've learned a lot about USAG and MSU and the USOC and the IOC and the ISU over the years, so... Right, right. Yeah, it's like a bad novel. <laughs> it's a bad novel. Um, so they said that there could be suspicion, there could be even an ongoing procedure, there could be many factors which do not lead to the satisfaction of the panel. But if you read the actual list of criteria, it's something that had to be pretty damning. 
to not allow. So they have something pretty strong. So if they have that evidence, I don't really see um, CAS overturning, or at least overturning many of them. You, perhaps uh, it would be um, Stobova or Vukin who got overturned. Right. I don't think both, and it'll be uh, something that's very interesting as we move ahead. But, but like you pointed out, they, they are not the um, top top teams yeah so so it, it doesn't change too much for the federation in terms of the team event most yeah likely. which i think at this point because that starts before the opening ceremonies i i would want to know who my team is have a couple of options and just be getting ready just go ahead with it yeah go ahead i mean it's it's the point where we are 11 days from opening ceremonies you really have to be uh on your game deciding this and moving forward i mean this we just had a week where the four continents was one of the worst competitions I've had to sit through in some time, but um, there were some real rays of light for me. Real rays of light, but overall, not the Madonna album. Wasn't that a Madonna album? Yeah, it really uh, did feel like Jennifer Robinson was coming out any any moment. She was she was next on the ice. Yeah. Sous la glace, representant Canada, Jennifer <laughs> Robinson. You know, yeah. Okay. Um, Throwback. Okay. But this was. It was weird. I actually, I have to tell you, I didn't really get into Four Continents. If it was a very depressing week. I think of anyone who's been involved in gymnastics or knows any of the people, it was very, very depressing. So it felt very weird to be... Anyone who's human. Yeah. Also. I, I mean, there was a, there's an intangible sadness about it that transcends even the specifics of the sport. I mean, obviously, it hits much harder to those like yourself who really are are, you know, engulfed in that world. And I'm very much on the outside of that gymnastics world, but still you just, the the sadness that overtook me was... Well, it was like oddly cathartic and yeah, not being uh, someone who's ever been sexually abused, but, you know, anyone who's ever had emotional abuse or physical abuse or any kind of mental abuse in their life, I think it was something that was very moving uh, towards the end of that because they got into so many different aspects of this and following that story and... Um, you know, a number of the and then to top it off, you went and saw what? I saw Dear Evan Hansen, which was wonderful. Yeah, and it talked about people being invisible. Oh, it was really great, Jonathan. Yeah. I have to tell you, I really felt I was like watching it, and I was thinking because we got we always got these messages from someone who I think wanted the Shibutani's to skate to Dear Evan Hansen, which really like wigs me out because it was like no, there there are some weird over under. Under overturns with the music or something with what was going on, mm -hmm. like no, that doesn't seem appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, <laughs> that seems a little flowers in the attic. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was like thinking, I was like, there, you know, there is a skater who could really do this and have like a viral moment. Um, obviously, with Sandra choreography, I think like mm -hmm. in a rink with like blue lighting on the ice and some like very, you know, spotlighty type things shot well. And all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, this is the story of Joshua Ferris. And this could like, with the whole vibe and you know, everything yeah. he's gone through and his whole emotional journey, journey. And just like kind of his um, voice on the ice. I thought that this mm -hmm. would be something he needs to skate to it. And even if he doesn't jump, because I know he has still, or spin, if he could just show some beautiful edges and movements. Just skate around the rink. Just like I Michelle just... and Karen, when they did that. Like, did mm -hmm. you watch that video when Michelle skated to Beautiful Thing? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And she does triple toes in other videos. Yes. <laughs> so speaking of Michelle and Karen, so I keep track of how little Olivia Opegard is doing. And I, I called Karen to, like, see how the meet went, you know, on Friday. Michelle and Karen have very similar voices and very disparate personalities. Because yes, if you've ever correct. met Karen, it's <laughs> she's very sassy. And it took me a minute to realize it was Michelle answering Karen's phone. So the Tricky. conversation had to get very different. The vibe had yeah, to change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever self-censor, you know, when you're around okay, certain yep, people? Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> you need to emotionally prepare for that. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. When I was like, Karen, how come you're not at nationals? She's like, well, my kids, my parents can't really handle my children. They were raised white. They have friends. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. 
<laughs> oh dear god yeah, she's funny she's, she's a firecracker she's a one. firecracker michelle yeah. was like well what do you mean olivia looks like her friend like, no never <laughs> bye michelle bye yeah okay. bye bye keep skating beautifully <laughs> keep skating beautifully we'll talk later okay yeah exactly. um anyway but we had i talked about this with michelle and i said we think Yuna's gonna light the torch right how do you see it she has to right like of course right. I would assume. I mean, I know that they have good speed skaters. I think this is how she should light it, Jonathan. She should come out. All of a sudden, we should find out that the middle of the stadium is in fact like a strip of ice. Like, it could be almost be like a long jump. Like, you know how you... I don't know if you've ever yeah. done a trap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it could be like just that wide, uh, narrow, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, strip of ice. Yeah. Just enough for her to do an Ina Bauer with the torch in the air. And something could catch. And, it could and then, out of nowhere, Adelina Adel- Sotnikova pushes her down and lights the thing instead. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the twist at the end. <laughs> or it could be like a picture of the podium from Sochi, and she could light it, and it could go up in flames. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, all the options. All the options. There's still time to implement. There have to be good ones, because like, sometimes the Olympic torch lightings are much better in theory yeah. than in practice in actuality yeah like do you remember when leaning lit the torch in beijing and he literally like walked around the arena like held from a string and like tried to hit the sides it went on for so long <laughs> a cool visual in like a snippet yeah but in real time that thing went on <laughs> and on and on okay well, I think the most traumatizing opening ceremony for me was the London games. I was watching from France, and then there was that whole like segment about like healthcare with the and there nurses were, like, and everything running around, and they looked Mary Poppinsy. And yeah, well, that part you got, but like, it, yeah, it was like the like like the ballet of hospital beds that I was like, I don't even understand what we're doing anymore. <laughs> so I really enjoyed the Soviet um, opening in. Uh, in Sochi, I thought that okay. that was a beautiful um, Mother Minus Russia. the final thing opening, right? With the ballet, and it was supposed to be, I think, War and Peace ballet, but it was to the music of My Sweet and Tender Beast, and they all were performing, and it was beautiful, and I okay. loved yeah. it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know... We'll see. Deep. We'll see what happens this time around. I, You know, I, I have to say, I don't always watch it live. Those are long... I know. Our friend Elkin Cabas, who loves uh, the... All of that pageantry. All yeah. the pageantry. He, like, gets really into it. You know, and I remember watching the last one, because I think we were having a couple of drinks, and at some point, like, Valentina was marching in, which you want to see in any opening, like, when the moment when Valentina walks More in. Valentina, please. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, please. I mean, how about when he got shirtless doing the Barbie Girl exhibition? We didn't talk about it. Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> Did you see Medvedev, Medvedeva's um, very dramatic um, exhibition where she's all like, but she's in like a hoodie? Interesting yes, thing. yes, yes, I did. That was odd. And of course, there's the Gitova's like wild outfit or whatever that was. That was. Can't even touch on Zagitova. She's nowhere near yeah. of age. We just not even touching it. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's exactly. awkward. Let's not talk about that. Okay. Hands off Zagitova. Yeah. <laughs> I think Medvedeva will be 18 soon in the future. Anyway, it doesn't cross those lines, but she was very Russian ice dancer E levels. Of, That's right. Um, all the feelings. All, all the feelings. feelings. Yeah. Her. Okay. <laughs> and she really knows how to hit a triple sow cow, triple toe. She can really just rotate. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God bless. So, yeah. Um, Meanwhile, in Taipei. (laughs) Meanwhile, in Taipei, we had a competition. Mm -hmm. Where should we start? When a U.S. pair (laughs) finishes first, second, and fourth. fourth. Mm -hmm. Then you knew the Chinese didn't show up and the Canadians imploded. No, I'm just teasing. And it happens overnight. You're like, what kind of an event was that? (laughs) They actually skated well. Have to they say. skated. They skated really well, and I'll tell you what. Like, <clears throat> we saw Tara and Danny come back at, at Zagreb, mm-hmm. right? And we were kind of like, okay, this seems like it has potential. Yes. Nationals that much better. Here that much better. I mean, you just you just wonder what kind of showdown could have potentially happened at Nationals had this all been shifted back and they started. So I think the program's great. 
I think so too. And it gets better each time. But I don't want them to do it another year. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand that. Because I'm somehow worried that because they miss the fall, people in skating always feel, oh, we should keep the program. No. Right, until we get more use out of it. Yeah. I have to it say. It's a good program, so I would encourage them to um, work with Shaylin again yes. and you know pursue all that kind of stuff again. But yes, a new program would be great. But it is fascinating to see how much better it got, even since Nationals. And that final kiss... That was kind of smoking hot to me. <laughs> like, so I think as he like together, threw her in and then you know. pulled his arm back. Cause you know, I think he, well, I was going to say walks on water, but that's a weird analogy for skating. <laughs> um, <clears throat> right. Like that's, he is here. Wait, I took notes. I yes. took many notes on this because for me watching their Swan Lake, it was kind of a moment. They were very, uh, so Tara has a lot of, piss and vinegar and fire to her as a person and i think we often didn't get to see it when they're just skating to phantom as jim did but now that they've done phantom for a short and a long i think we can all hope that we're done with phantom it's over it gets retired maybe we can put andrew lloyd weber in general back on the shelf (laughs) for them yeah yeah i think i think we're done with zdilina you know i think we are done with um that okay let's hear Okay, a couple of so I have a couple of questions, Dave. Yes. <laughs> As a former pair girl, do you find <laughs> that uh, when you're doing uh, triple twists, mm-hmm. when you're doing lifts in general, these it's it should be a shared um, responsibility. Sort of, it's a shared responsibility. It is. The and girl I has help. to hold herself up in the lift. The girls are I'm, working in the lifts. I'm curious in this particular instance if she could be. I don't claim to have a pair's technical eye, but I'm I'm curious if she could be providing a bit more strength and pull more of I guess her own weight <laughs> in the lifts and the twists. If she can aid him more. He seems to be doing all the work. So the twist definitely looks strange. Like technique it's... or Feldenkrais or even a massage when they're like, give me the weight of your head. Like, yes. give it to me and let me dictate where it's going. As a control person, I wonder if you're able to do that, <laughs> Or if you're like, I'm going to hold it. But she's, she seems to be giving him all her all her dead weight almost. So first Would of you... all, I don't enjoy a massage. I just... I love them. Okay. Okay. I mean, like, like, sometimes if I'm, like, dictating, but no. Um, Okay, okay. Okay. I'd rather do yoga and ring it out myself on the, you know, yeah. Okay. So they have a really strange twist that just never pops. There's never any push, and I don't know what, I think we'd have to Well, the one in the short almost seemed to be going this way instead of that way. It was the weirdest. So you're correct. It's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. And it's bad, and it's wrong, and it's offensive, okay? Yeah. I mean, they have many great qualities, but that, especially as you compare, like, if they were to try to, let's say they were at the most refined they could have been at Nationals. You know, it's those wow elements that Chris and Alexa have, like the twist, that really do separate that so this is where delilah is really strong is she strong with some of the throws some of the real brute you know like mac truck elements of skating like circus type feet circus or like um nascar monster truck elements of skating that's really just wow yeah that's really like the colorado kinds of level of artistry um yeah uh-huh. Like uh-huh. a Mack truck the... performance is really where Delilah <laughs> shines. Um, and her teams over the years. So John Coughlin uh, and Delilah, you know, no longer super friendly. Um, okay. And one of the things she said is, don't go to Florida. Like, you cannot help them with the twist. Well, John did. And this, oh, okay. is, this was part of the rupture. Um, but they need to bring him back more. I think they need to go all in and really work this Just twist. Just own it. If someone can help you in that element, because so many other things are going great, but that's really... She needs to be slingshot like Alexa. Okay, in the air. Yeah. I would, yeah. Um, okay, a couple of other She thoughts. needs to look half Chinese when they're done with this. Okay, I want that twist to be so high, like she's Katya Gordieva-ing it. Okay? Yeah. 
Exactly. And it just probably needs like a whole new approach. So or Tara's something. basically been crippled for the last two years, although she, they have not broadcast it in the way that like Alexa is very open about what she went through. Tara, they've kept it very quiet. She had a very bad knee situation with cysts and something else. I don't really even know what all happened with up in her knee. At a certain point, they didn't know if she was going to be able to skate again. Then um, last summer, when she got surgery and she uh, was going over the concussion, and she took a long time uh, in Colorado uh, at the USOC to rehab it. Didn't skate with the Colorado pairs. She went to the Monument Rink um, and the Air Force <laughs> Academy when she was working on things. Uh, but they're now better. So I would like to see them get a little Russian in the skating skills and spend some time, or even with Shaylin, like really learning to skate you know yeah. her skating skills have never been she's strongest. just a bit tighter to me yeah. and and he has he has such an open generous quality to his skating and she just seems a little bit tighter is, and she's always been I playing think. catch up because he had more pair experience than she did so mm. now i think is the time look we have the next four years i think you have to look at a plan and say where do i want to be Right. Technically, I feel like we've gotten back to the level where they've always been at, where we're doing two double axles. We're doing, you know, they got the throw. Which is great to have come yeah. back here now after yeah. all of the these. sound cow was good. Moving forward, you're saying, yeah. Yeah, we got this back. Like, we're back. We're at a stable place, mm -hmm. right? We're not adding anything. The throw, flip, lots, you know, needs work, but it's always kind of needed work. So right. we're, we're back at a baseline, right? Like, right. we're where we should be. Uh, I think that they need to work on the skating skills and spend, like... I think Tara responds a lot to Shay. I think they share a lot of, like, female spark and star quality and all of that. I think if sh they can really work on their tracking, on the, the skating skills with Shay Lynn, and really... Dave, do you watch her? Shay? No. Do you watch um, Tara in the programs? Yes. I, I, she's invisible to me. Oh, no. I am so fixated on him. I watch both. But, okay. you know, there are things that are, like, glaring nails on a chalkboard. And the crossover situation can yeah. be a little pumpy. Um, right. Although I really liked Watch Tara and Danny overall. But there, there are some of the levels and things. I think that they need to start rebuilding their skating from the ground up. So mm. I think we need to start with the skating skills and just the partnering and really. Because the matching, Alexa, if you will. Yeah. Alexa and Chris have a good look. And they mm -hmm. have an overall look. But what they can do on the ice, they're three turns and mohawks. They are not doing anything difficult in terms of skating skills. So okay. I think if they can work with Shaylin for like six weeks and yeah. then go back and then incorporate this into what we're doing every day, I think they could really start to be more competitive as well okay. as when you have... Because one of the things is when the skaters used to work with Tarasova... They used to spend, <laughs> you know, they would start with an hour every day of her edge class. And apparently it's difficult and brilliant, but it's like so challenging where you could just start putting footwork sequences together based on her warm up and right. what she has them doing with cranking these edges and putting clusters together. So I think mm -hmm. that they need to re really start with the that skating kind of work. Yeah. <laughs> and then get the elements because they okay. seem to be doing the elements, but not really having the connecting right. things so but they do now like some of the things i responded to most mm -hmm. were some of the uh dismounts of yes. the lifts. oh my gosh i think it's the first lasso lift in the in the swan lake when he brings her down and without missing a beat just places his foot and goes right into the spread eagle and i'm like holy cow like this is like next level kind of intricate moments that they're able to create Mm -hmm. uh, often from him, you know what I mean? But I was just like, it was incredible. And I almost loved the dismount of the um, the final, the reverse mm -hmm. lasso lift. Yes. Because she, she's like, you know, like falls Unraveling, down. Unraveling, you know? Was, yeah, yeah it, it's a very cool moment. It, then all of a sudden it did look like she was just maybe just hanging there for a second too long. <laughs> but like the concept and the idea of it was so cool. And I'm telling you, like I was like, I had... I was really invested in a way I didn't know I could be for them. They have and a little it factor. Them. The kiss with that kiss, because it was so villainous and it was so, um, 
I don't, I, I said in the text, I was like, maybe I'm just lonely, like, but like, I like, I like really responded to, to that final moment. Um, and watching his hands mm -hmm. and there's some, there's a specific thing, his arms after the combo spin, mm -hmm. you kind of see what I'm talking about. Like there's a space between his rib cage and his arm and there's, it's like a buoyancy and he just fully extends and owns his owns his wingspan in a way that a lot of um, North American men, men do not. Yeah. And, and it's really, and the hydroblading moment, like, I think there's much potential with this collaboration. Yes. And, and so I'm excited to see what comes up for next year. Yeah. So listen to us, Jim, multiple weeks. Although I have to tell you, because sometimes I'll say to him, I'll be like, um, you two well you said about how he apologized for the YouTube cover to you at nationals <laughs> he's, he's like a class he was like delightful when yeah. i met him yeah <clears throat> but i i made sure to um message deanna separately about who they need to work with next year for choreographers and Correct. and him because he's a very stubborn control talk about control i mean yeah <laughs> so so he maybe doesn't like massages either. I, I mean, I go think I'm the, controlling, but I always want a massage. <laughs> we even go in through the drunk friend that, you know, that he has. Sure That's right. That. We all have that, Dave. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah. I, okay, so Deanna and Nate. Well, I think that they have really started to show potential. So I think she's not a... Um, she, you have to obviously she's catching up on pairs and i don't think she's like i think she's a very consistent competitor once she like but she's slow building blocks right so like last year to do a good but short that's how that, you build it the right in a consistent yeah. real way i feel yes right yeah but she's not the one that you're just gonna like put her out there and just have her you know do she's these scrappily get there no she's yeah. going to learn it and learn it right and learn it gradually and it's going to take a long time and there are going to be a lot of messy outings but yeah. now that they're doing and they're going for the quad i think they need to go for the quad in every competition if they plan on doing it next year at four continents hopefully the worlds if they were make it and the nationals i think that they need to have that quad in there every competition in order so you to know how in singles we talk about Kolyada, mm -hmm. he's often going for the quad lots and not making it. But we mm -hmm. obviously know that it's like totally right there. It just may not be consistent in performance. Whereas um, maybe like Adam seems like kind of a shot in the dark or mm -hmm. when Jason would do it, maybe it was kind of more of a shot in the dark. This surprised me, mm -hmm. their quad sao cow. And I just thought, huh, do they, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it on social media or something had it been going that well or if it was just like a hail mary pass i don't think it's a hail mary pass though i don't think it's a hundred percent consistent because i know that they showed it at champs camp and then jim uh mitch didn't want it in the program but then they you know kept working you know kept training it and they put it in so i don't think it was a hundred percent ready but I so think do you see it as something that is a uh, something that they will tackle in the foreseeable future? Well, first of all, if American pairs ever want to move forward, they will need more difficult elements. So they of have course. to do it. You know, you yeah. unless yeah. unless we're keeping showing up for participation, I think we need right. they need, you know, good elements. She has such a great look on the ice. Such a great skater. You know, she's old school. She posture, knows posture, length. spiral. Yeah. She's from when this really mattered in skating. Back in the the Sasha Cohen era when you just, you had to look like a million dollars if you wanted to right. stand out. And he, Nate, not as much. Uh, he could work on that um, camel position, um, mm -hmm. definitely. But he is a strong kind of like ox. Like he could pull a wagon on the Oregon Trail. He really looks well, like... Well, that's... A, and you know, everyone's so... He can pull a wagon. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, You're catching um, my... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Um <clears throat> There is such a craving for nostalgia in the sport, right? right? And and I think like they can tap in on something, but how then moving forward, mm -hmm. I know like letting her really be the flower and the showcase and just like showcase the hell out of this 6.0 quality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what is the vehicle that allows them to do that? Because I was thinking- Not you know, a YouTube cover, not a Rohini right. moment. We, we go to, we spend the money. 
which apparently she has some money. Like there was some sort of a settlement. There's some story with her, you know, like her father was in a plane crash, but they got like a good settlement from it. Oh. So turn tragedy into opportunity. We right. need to um, go to Marie France and David Wilson and mm. really like have a, a program about a man and a woman and like modernize. Yeah, even you know what Sandra was attempting to do with Luba and Dylan. Yes. you know with that, but just just someone who's going to sit down and be like, "Here's what we have." Yes. Now, what do we? How can we move forward with these pieces in a unique way? And they need to Vers- use her position. Remember her back position. I mean, it was a little like uh, Philip Mills is a little for me sometimes. Like it was a little too much. But we need to like hit a beautiful um, position and really absolutely. Work with it. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, I mean, we need to mosque Vina it. Okay, we need to. You, and it may be thinking outside the box in order to almost look more inside the box from a different era. Like, I think there's something there, but it really has to be thought out. Because mm-hmm. they have to... a big open quality when they skate. They skate with power. They've got good crossovers. Which makes me think of Aaron Copeland, like those big, like, Americana symphony kind of things mm-hmm. would be you would really like good. her to do the Brian Boitano spread eagles around the eyes. Then... Yes. And then Nate like stands in the middle and waits for her. Yes. <laughs> if she could just do a spiral around the ring as we watched. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It needs to look Tessa Virtue-y, you know? Mm-hmm. A little less papadakis and a little more Tessa Virtue-y. You get yeah, it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's there. It's interesting because, you know, at, at first I wondered at the beginning of the season, there seemed to be from obviously... An, just a casual viewer of it. Like there seemed to be tension in the kiss and cry, but maybe throughout the season, there's just like kind of a serious mm-hmm. vibe. And maybe yeah. cause she's constantly learning. She's yeah. constantly taking in. They're constantly assessing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks so serious <laughs> afterwards. And I would love to see just a lighter quality off stage, uh, off stage. I think uh, they're learning. Off, yeah. I think that they are moving ahead. Yeah, but I, like, get her. Like, I see the wheels turning yeah. every time. And it's so funny because you also see um, Jim Peterson teach the minute they get off the ice. Which I kind of like to hear what it, what what kind of coaches' comments make in those. Or, you I know. think he's always teaching. Don't you feel like these teams are doing run-throughs and run-throughs and yeah, spreadsheets? Exactly. And... Yeah, yeah. I don't think Jim ever stops working. Do you? Okay. Yeah, like, like, even maybe wakes up in the middle of the night being like, you know what else I should tell them. Because yeah. you notice that, like, when he and Amanda are having fun, they're, like, going to the ballet, and it's, like, not to, like, cruise. It's, like, to go and, like, think about things that we should be doing in our pair skating, you know, here. Exactly. Enhancing our art with more art. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ashley and Tim, Kane and LaDuke, I see a lot of performance quality in her especially that's grown yes she's really she feels more comfortable in the i ain't got time for you baby you know yeah Yeah. (laughs) she's letting it out but can we let's have a moment of honesty this program this i know i've just i'm I'm not (laughs) very outspoken i'm sorry okay (laughs) Come on. Okay. <laughs> this whole look. I have seen uh Oh my god, why am I forgetting the movie? Um th- th- this is from um Baz Luhrmann. Um Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby. Thank yeah. you, Jonathan. Okay. Um And you know me, I was the guy. I saw it in a theater in Germany and of course like I had read the book and all this sort of stuff and the soundtrack is what it is. But like every scene, I'd be like, "Look at those pillows!" Yeah, no, I'd visually, be like, look at the bedding. <laughs> like, you know, that was the weak line elements. You know who I thought was the weak link in that movie? Don't shoot me, Leonardo okay. DiCaprio. I never thought he yeah. had the charm. I never thought he could deliver old sport well. I thought it sounded yeah. forced. I thought that their chemistry was all wrong. It was it a bit just, put on. Yeah. Yes, I again, just, I was just more into whoever designed the home. Yes, like, and the party the scenes <laughs> were fantastic, right? I yeah, loved yeah. that Young and Beautiful song at the time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I even got the Beyonce and Jay-Z, like, modernizing the party thing. But I yeah, don't think that I, we need to put I all of this... in, in context of the film. Yeah. Do you find that it translates in these programs? Never. Yeah. 
I and we've seen we... several versions in di various disciplines. So in a film over time, you know, uh, these three different, uh, you know, genres of music can really have their moment and they could fit the theme and what's going on and be very communicative. I've never understood slapping them together and putting them in a program. I didn't think it worked for Hubble and Donahue. I didn't think it worked for Mirai. And I don't think it works for Kane and LeDuc. Although I think that she's a wonderful flapper girl. Mm. I think she's great. I think she yeah. gets it. She's partying on the ice. Uh, but here's also one of those things. If you're going to do a kind of medley. Yeah. Or, you know, just different things to capture different moods. Mm -hmm. I understand, obviously, saying... Well, these three came from the movie, but we're not watching the movie. So in the context of your mm -hmm. skating program, I don't understand the relations sometimes. Yeah. It's too disjunct. And just to say, oh, well, this was also in the same movie. It doesn't matter if in this four minutes it doesn't seem connected in a way. So I think it should be uh, the same composer and the same artist generally when you are Switching. Otherwise, it's just one of those Tanya programs from the early 90s where they're like, here's some Batman. Great. Here's some sexy slow music with an alto saxophone. Boom. Here's something else entirely. Like, it's just like three different. OK. And so things. now that Tim LaDuke is officially out, like, OK, are they lovers in this program? Are they just at the party together? And he's like her friend. Like, what is their relationship on the ice? What is going on? Let's let's talk about it. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously it was not news, but I yeah. guess he had never formally made it. Um, I mean, have you seen yeah. that he always used to have the diva moment in the program with Dee Dee and that you'd rather watch him than her? I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, he's very attractive. Yes. And Ashley, also, very attractive girl. Very attractive girl. And in a way, with the a way nice they... new haircut, by the way, she's got going mm -hmm. on off the ice. The yeah. packaging is like, okay, they've got a thing and it's a very sensual program and they seem sensual. But here's what's not sensual is their relation to each other. Okay, mm -hmm. obviously, they're, they're not, they are not married. They are not one of the pairs. But they're always like putting a spell on each other in the short programs and stuff. It's a theme for sure. <laughs> but I'm going to, I wrote down the exact moment where it kind of happened. Um, I think, uh, da, 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 da. okay, after the triple loops mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the free skate. Always a white knuckle for this team. Mm -hmm. Great in the short. I mean, yeah. Free. But then they come together, okay? And they're standing close ish to each other, doing like a choreographic moment. And there's zero, they're exuding a lot of like, look, I'm being sexy right now, but you don't feel it between them. And I physically want her close to him. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your sexual preference is. You still know how to make something look in a way. Grab her, wrap your arms around Have her. Have you she seen her boyfriend and his eyebrows? Tim is more macho looking. So I think, yeah. Actually, first when I saw the three of them together, I wondered who was with who, but that, yeah. uh, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. But it, the chemistry, there needs to be a closeness in the actual proximity of, of some of these choreographic moments that will also help them seem more like a pair to me. Unless like the distance of two single skaters. Yes. And in the the way the slow-mo works sometimes on the networks, this is one where they actually speed it up. Mm -hmm. The replays are not slow motion. They're a little fast forwarded. And when they would show the lifts at a faster speed, mm -hmm. they were much better. And I was like, oh gosh, I wish they actually did them at this quickened pace. Because for mm -hmm. me, I think also feeling in person and in you know, televised is it's that it's that speed and f forward driving energy that sometimes is lacking. So then when they would go back and they'd show the triple loops mm -hmm. as like they were approached quicker and the lifts were faster and covered more. I don't know. That's what's missing for me. So one thing I notice is that they have different entrances into the triple loops in both programs and different patterns. And why? And why the triple loop second? OK, this is your element that is like on a hope and a prayer. So why right. are we doing it second? The sow cow, I would think we could even still do that as a three jump combo after the loop. Like, let's get the loops done with. Let's stick right. to the one entrance that we're going to pray. Well, I would think that the consist, like the consistent approach is what's gonna, I mean, even um, Tara and Danny. Um, 
Yeah, they do the same lift entrance in both programs for one of them. You know, the one where she's like up in his arms. And, and why? Crouching. Because not the most naturally talented skaters. Let's do right. what works. So, yeah. so create consistency so yeah. that it's automatic. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that would be smart. Ashley doesn't seem like the most confident jumper side by side. So I think especially rotating with a partner. So I think mm -hmm. you got to do what works and you got to be get it done. Right. Yeah. Get it done. Get it done. Get the points. Move on. You know, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah I, uh, I, and they, I know you like to joke about the coaching staff. What a moment in the kiss and cry when. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Peter Kane, um, former fiance of Linda Freddy Annie. Um, oh, God. I thought that was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Okay. Okay. So. Um, he thought that they won, and then... Like, the math was a little off. He told them to look for a number that I think was not correct. Yes. It was it yeah. just, to me, it just felt perfect for this pair team and how things seemed to be going. <laughs> you know, the game, and, and, you, and I think, you know, this is all speculation. Mm -hmm. I think Tim also then, because he was told, if you get this score, you're number one. And yeah. so they got well over that score. But, of yeah. course, it meant they were number two. And Tim handled it with grace. You could tell he thinks he wins and then changes it, but is still very happy. I mean, for them, a silver Tim medal. Tim is very savvy it. about what's going on. He's a mastermind. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's... And then the North Korean pair, very charming, I think. Especially in the short program, I thought, was, was very successful. They have some great elements. Mm -hmm. There's like a cleanly, crisp quality to their skating. I think... She's, they say she's 18, but she's probably 11, right? Like, oh my gosh. Um, you ever see Kim Gong Suk? You know, Do you remember that story? No. Okay. So Kim Gong Suk was a gymnast from North Korea on the team in 92 games in Barcelona. Barcelona. Um, she was also <laughs> in uh, the 91 World Championships in the 89. If you, now she appeared on the scene in like 87, 88 ish, looking approximately five or six doing like elite skills in gymnastics okay when she got to like she was always losing her teeth and they would try to say that they were from accidents that happened on the uneven bars while training and bella caroli would say that she was losing her milk teeth that she was losing her baby teeth and that they were falling yeah. out and that's why she got one medal stripped from her at the 91 worlds because they said that she was clearly underage. It was kind of like the sway in hand situation where her birth date had an or, but it wasn't just like a one or situation. There were like two or three. So that finally the Federation oh, had to say okay. like, that's clearly not a mistake. Um, right. Right. And they still let her in the Olympics. Cause you know how these right. governing bodies work. Um, I mean, it's not like a person is a tree. We couldn't just like cut her leg open and count the rings. So no one knows exactly how not old. Not before she... the event, anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. No one knows exactly how old she was, but okay. there are a lot of fun theories. Um, mm -hmm. There was a picture of her that like emerged years later, and she looked like a perfectly normal sized, normal aged human adult. So she, it didn't. You know, the funny thing is, is that why we're so cynical about um, the Russians and the fans is because um, when four out of the six Chinese gymnasts were underage in Beijing. They tried to tell us that it was just our fatty American diets and that um, these girls are just look younger. And these are what the fans were saying. And then again, now that they are fully formed adults, they all look normal. They don't just look 11. They were, right. thir they were uh, yeah, like 12 exactly. or 13. Yeah. Exactly. And so this has been going on for a long time. But yeah. the North Korean team seems very sweet. Uh, we bow to the coaches as though we are... They don't just bow to the coaches. They do the whole, like, ending program bow. Ending of the program kind of bow. Yeah, it did not seem like um, what we would associate with a bow of respect. It was like a showy kind of performance yeah. bow. Yeah, it was interesting. It's interesting, Jonathan. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh... I'm here Intrigued. for it. Okay. And even though they train, they train in Montreal. They right? were, they were going to Pilates with Megan. So, but, but yet it's the North Korean delegation that is with them. Yeah. It's in the kiss and cry. So, yeah. Interesting. But I, it'll be interesting to see where they go and how they're able to develop. I mean, 
with more competitions. Well, than, I know at 18, uh, you don't know how many more years you have left. So it's, it's, it's exactly. Tough. I feel like plenty because yeah. maybe they're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So speaking of development, let's talk about the, let's shift to the ice dance. Let's just get brutal. Okay. okay. Just on a, just on a quick side note, sad for Dylan and Luba. I, I believe, even though they're not talking about, Dylan's clearly seemed injured to me at Canadians. I don't know how open. And then he looks this, old and know. injured and tired and like. And that disappointment and have to turn around and do this. I mean, he kind I, of has this vibe where he looks like a racehorse who we're going to take to the back of the barn. Like I was I hope, just thinking, I, I had a similar analogy yeah. in my mind. Like yeah. he hasn't been able to rotate the triple toes for some or the sow cows like often. Like yeah, we knew that she couldn't jump, but. He often, but he could, yeah. yeah. So that it's an unfortunate, I'm assuming, ending to their story. We don't know and that. One thing I think is so brilliant is you know that Dylan can't fully extend his arms, so they because he has like a natural bend in it, and they right. you're not allowed to bend your arms in the lift, so they often will get zero points for the lifts. I like how she always drapes over them to hide the elbow. Brilliant. That's just smart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But of course, you have to actually lift her in order for her to do that. Yes. And then when he was just like lunging across the ice, and you realize how long that um, I'm yeah. allowed to go on a carry down the yeah. do, do you remember there's a Golden Girls episode <laughs> where the girls are entering like a tap dancing competition? Yes. And then Dorothy gets injured, so she can't do her solo. So. They're practicing and they start doing this backup thing, waiting for Dorothy to do her solo, and they don't realize how long her solo is. They're like, "Oh man, look how long this solo is! She better get better." That was like the moment where they aborted the lift because they skated around for what seemed like an eternity. Yes, you're like, "Wow, I guess that lift really took a lot of time in the program." That was tough. That was tough. That so. was tough, and you know, it, it was nicer when we left it out to not point it out. <laughs> I, I see what your strategy was there, Dave. I, got it. Got it. It looked beyond <laughs> career. Color short, the Jonathan Byer story. <laughs> okay. Now, hmm. as we move to uh, the Ice Dance event, Hawaii and Baker, big win. I feel like they are ready to graduate on to start competing at the world level. But Jonathan, do you see it happening? I feel like they've gotten as far as they can in their current situation. Okay. I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. His specialness mm. with that, and again, when we were talking about that high rib cage and stuff, his short dance is, I, I think he's really great in it. The Liebestraum, thank you for no weird lyrics, Buchen. I guess we won't have to see that at the Olympics at least. Um, <clears throat> there's beautiful moments and there's beautiful skating skills especially from him mm -hmm. but they don't they there are some real lost moments mm -hmm. there can be more sophisticated choreography that they can handle the biggest thing i see for them even though he's so great and she's good uh is the height situation i don't know how any team with any coach or choreographer could mask what inevitably seem like kind of awkward lifts. And she seems very aware of that, even in, I feel like she's... It's not her fault. No, but I feel like the story of their career over the last four years is like they won and everyone immediately started to look and they said, is this going to last? Like, this has not been... Emily Tuttle was like, well, this is never going to last. You know, early on, she was like, I don't... Because there's, there's an inherent... Yes. dilemma and, and and that would be a dilemma it's his dilemma yeah because he is so great but he is quite small in stature yeah. i i don't know if if, if they split yeah. there's no one there's no one for him yeah maybe elizabeth uh um maybe maya shibutani if she split with alex could skate with him but, but even yeah. she's probably tall uh, don't you think she's as tall as caitlin i don't think so Okay. Or I'm like, who's that girl that skates for Kazakhstan? <laughs> Elizabeth Turz and Maeva. Yeah, yes. get her to do it with you. <laughs> like <laughs> Maybe Shoma Uno could do it with John Luke and they could <laughs> Fine, I'd watch. I mean, the thing is like I just the, so many great qualities, but I don't I don't know how you could make the lifts and convince they've also perfected this style that they have, and it's a mm -hmm. little old fashioned for ice dance. I feel like they're now approaching the Marina um, 2010 kind of aesthetic uh, right. and that they've really done that and that Ice Dance has moved a little bit more modern in the, but I think that they're very lovely and that they gave a full 100% performance 
And mm-hmm. now I think they need to get their asses kicked every single day with other teams have to skate faster, more powerful. Uh, and they can handle more sophisticated programs. Yeah. More nuanced that it responds to the music better. There are there are blatant, you know, when we I, we joke, but it's like, what does the music ask for? Mm-hmm. The music several times was asking for something in which nothing was happening. And I feel like they've also had to really adjust to being a top team and the pressure and the expectations and how quickly you move up. Like, it seems like they've really had a lot of some struggles. You know, they had mm-hmm. one season where they were a mess uh, in 2015, 2016. And then they've kind of worked their way back up. They had a rough nationals, but they were better this year and they've moved forward. But I think that they've outgrown their situation. I think they need to be around other teams, especially to have that competitiveness, to see the team skating faster than you next to you so that you start doing that. So I don't know if they need to move to Marina or they need to move to Montreal, but I think that they need to kind of pick one or the other. I know Marina has long had her eye on him and his talent. So who wouldn't? Yeah. I mean, he, it would be such a get, but, but again, like you say, it comes with a dilemma. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I, I tend to think that they'll stay in Michigan. I think if they move, I think it would be to Marina if they, if they would, you know, but I, 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 um, I think she could at least help them something. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I um, agree. And Massimo. I think that the Canadians have a, maybe more potential, but that they, uh, Caroline and Shane, but that they didn't sh- Him was, especially. He was also very good. He's, okay, so he is Liam versus younger brother. He has all of the talent of Liam uh, in terms of skating skills. He's, and as you say, but in the right discipline. <laughs> in the right discipline. He seems like a rock steady kind of skater Mm -hmm. he doesn't have as much peacock persona peacockery (laughs) peacockery like he's not flamboyant in the ice Mm -hmm. dance sense so they have to really and they seem to be going for the fred and ginger vibe with the two well certainly with this free dance absolutely and i noticed with the long skirt they seem to be um disguising caroline's lack of um lines uh that she could definitely work on the extension Mm-hmm. So, but I think that they have more raw natural ability, even than Caitlin and John Luke do in terms of what they could accomplish four years from now. There okay. seems to be like a lot of work that needs to be done, but a lot of, first of all, he's got like the Canadian skating skills down to like a science. Like it's right. just stunning. When you watch them, when they're on uh, the step sequence and you see the way he moves his edge backwards and forwards and, and how perfect his weight is over his blade, it's just gorgeous. So, yeah. and the way that you appreciate John Luke's knees, just watch Shane Fierce's placement over. Okay, I'm blade. intrigued to, because I watch them and um, I do not have the refined eye that you do for ice dance, but okay. so I take a lot of performance quality and I'm always judging. It's so hard to separate for me the choreographer okay. and the skater themselves. So, so let's I, talk about. Go back placement pretend that this is the foot this is dear front. evan hansen <laughs> dear evan hansen this is the front of the foot this is wait, wait so this is the front of the foot this is the back of the foot okay when you are skating forwards you want your weight to be around here ish right so this is like around the arch kind of right. moving toward you know and when you're skating backwards you want to be around here around the ball of the foot and a little bit back that's kind of like where it's hard to like sit. There's like a no. You're yeah. describing it very well. Yeah. So that when people are doing the twizzles, you're really moving your you're moving your weight between here and here, here and here. You're constantly right. going backwards, and that's how you get the turn, and that's how you're properly placed. His is so precise and just stunning. When you watch him turn, he is just dead on. Like I, just, okay. it is like amazing, amazing. Mm. You know, mm. Liam too, Patrick Chan as well. When you watch just you know, although Patrick can get a little wild when he's, you know, doing some of those jumps and things, but okay. uh, the Furious brothers are just like, like, uh, like God told them to skate. Like, yeah. I just, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. This, this is what they should be doing in life. So, now they're short, but they're both short. So maybe he could skate with John Luke, and John Luke could be the peacock, and he could be. That's right. <laughs> he could be the Jane Torval. Okay, That's I think right. that this That's could right. be great too. <laughs> Okay. So, but yeah, I, I, I think that we need to work on obviously the extension and 
not skating to cheek to cheek for like four minutes. That was a little much of that. A little theme. goes a long way. Yeah. That would be a better short dance. Less is more, as you said. Yeah. But yeah. overall, I like it. There are a lot of short boys that we like in ice dance. Also, the Parsons brother. Very attractive. Very talented. Uh, She's very talented, but like... But he, he really... Isn't it interesting? We're talking about a lot of these have very strong men in the teams. Yeah. It's not always the case. Strong, um, but tiny men. You know, it's yeah. like the tiny Tim... The Shoma Uno championship of the... <laughs> Although the difference is the Parsons boy. It yeah. sounds like we're in like an old novel. We're the like Parsons Frank Carroll. The Parsons boy is wonderful. That's right. He, he has a big presence yeah. and is, very, and is a, a bigger figure on the ice. Um, I feel like she has just this like sensuality on the ice that I mm, like okay. very much. So. I just find it's interesting in so much mirror skating that's happening. It can't help but be comparative. Mm -hmm. And I was more drawn to his lines often in general. Um, but it's also, I think I watched them on the Olympic Channel commentary. And, you know, all this talk. Oh, they were just juniors. They were just juniors, juniors, juniors. And I was like, yeah, but they're like in their 20s. Like They were juniors for like 10 years. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite the same comparison as, you know, a young skater who's making that transition. These were kind of established they're not like the Atari to Baritza girls, okay? This is yeah, it's not a 13 or 14 year old kid who's making a transition to senior, you know, yeah. like, let's be honest. So I wonder, I wonder what happens next mm -hmm. in, in the US for ice dance. It's not so certain. So moving on to the men's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who won for you? Oh, Okay, so this is one of those examples where I check the schedule first, mm -hmm. right? Like I like open my eye in the morning and I was like, who did it? <laughs> and then I saw the results and saw that Boyan Jin won and Shoma was second. And I immediately assumed, oh, Shoma had one of those programs. Mm -hmm. And then I watched Shoma and I was like, okay, hold on now. No, he didn't. A hundred percent, I thought Shoma should have won. It didn't make a, he looked like a bumblebee or whatever was happening, but literally a yellow jacket. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I was I was rather confused. And it seemed like perhaps the judges were also. So I don't think I could go past an eight in any of the components for Boyang Jin, and I think that's being generous. Now, some yeah. of the scores Max got here, I also could not give him in good faith. Right, you know? right. Uh, just, just no. Um, well, even more, like, I, I keep thinking they were smart to hire Lori. Yes. Um, and again, I think much more successful in the short than perhaps the long. But I got the idea of the long program. You're Lori. Mm -hmm. You work with these great people. You have here's to have a gimmick my, for him. You know, here's you, said, what are you going to do? And you already kind of did the more gimmicky thing. Last year. The free. So I got the idea of, or I understand her idea of Star Wars is strong. Star Wars and, and planets and all this sort of stuff. Big jumps. It can it can help do all of that. But what's so funny is he's kind of that that wafy frame. Is that an, is that rude to say wafy? No. He's, uh, we called um, him the number two pencil before. Let's be honest. Okay. Let's... Well, so I guess it's nicer than that. <laughs> but he's he's that kind of of figure. <laughs> Uh, like Nathan, like Hanyu, you know, it's it's that thing. But Shoma's Shoma, even though Boyan Jin out jumped him, still seems stronger. Mm -hmm. He skates stronger. He can pull off stronger music. Mm -hmm. Boyan Jin, even though he has the technical ability in the jumps alone, he does not create a powerful energy. Mm -hmm. So it, it is and actually, the gray. Was, it's a boring energy, to be honest. It's a little bit, a little bit. Um. And I, I, but I talking about energy. W the reason why you don't repeat programs so many times is I felt that Shoma is so special, and the one thing that we've loved about him is he can translate power and emotion and everything on the ice. And I, I feel like it's dimming with the Turanda. I think it's really been See, done. See, that's interesting. Can you tell me why? Because then I'll, I'll, I'll give you my take on this one. And maybe I just feel like we've. He's settled on the program. It's good. It's great skating. But I felt like last year, he just did it. He just yeah. embodied that music. And here, I feel like he's done it. He's done this music. It's, it's not ringing to me. It's not feeling... Like he feels... Like, there's only so many times 
you can hear a piece of music and respond to it every day. Right? Like, you, there's yeah. a shelf life to it. Where yeah. before it becomes, okay, I put my arm here, I do this, I do the best D-squat, I go backwards, the cantilever. There's only so many times that you can feel genuinely... Well, he started. he started with this program even in the season very early on and has competed quite a bit this season. Yeah. You know, unlike some other competitors, you know, Hanyu, like we've barely seen, you know, yeah. no Grand Prix final, no nationals, no four con. I mean, we've we've also been exposed to the program that much more. But I felt this time his hands woke up. Mm. I felt like um, in this in this version of the program, he was paying attention to details that formerly were getting washed Did you over. see where he like picked? It almost looked like he was picking up a suitcase at one point. Like he does this cool move with his arm. Where oh he, yeah, yeah. So like a, just the yeah. back in general. I felt like I was noticing the back more, the space under the arms more. Mm -hmm. But really, there was a lot more activity mm -hmm. and but intended activity and attention to the hands, mm -hmm. which to me were. I mean, they're hands. Like it's yeah. not the same as his posture or his knee bend or something like that. But I felt like it was a layer he was adding. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt like there was an. Uh, an attention to the interpretation that was previously not there kind of on the Grand Prix circuit. So Bo Yang Jin, I feel like we've, he did as well as he's going to do this season. Maybe he can replicate it, but I feel like Shoma is like, he was, he's really improving and peaking. And oh, come on now. You want to talk about, sorry. Do you want to talk about momentum? You know how yeah. <laughs> in that, he's Shoma's got it. You just yeah. watch. You just I think he's getting closer. I think he's peaking better than Javi. I think he's more in tune with his technique, mm -hmm. being over the right side. Like everything is coming into play. If he can get that quad flip, the even the jump landings were a little bit better here, especially on the quad toes. So I think it's those. It's that like old, like those old mythological stories where like the planets are suddenly about to just like hit that line. Yes, and that's going to happen at the Olympics. I feel it. I I really think. And we so. don't know with Nathan like which jumps is he going to do? Which you know, there's so I'm just, even Javi. You don't know yeah. which Javi is showing up. You don't know the state of Hanyu. You don't know many things. Mm -hmm. But consistently, that's why even like the addition of these hands, that that all the jumps were that much closer this time. I was like, we're this is a thing. Yeah, this is a thing. He he's planning to peak. I think at the right moment. In the way we thought Costner was peaking until she showed up in that lime green and just <laughs> well, yeah. An outfit like that that'll just wreak havoc with you. Let's be honest. Yeah. So. Do you remember um, Sarah Hughes' um, sow cow technique? When we look at, you know how you think about that every night, Dave? <laughs> she, so, you know, sow cow, I'm always like watching. I remember the, her moving her butt kind of when she go into the triple loop, triple loop. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, she was just hula hooping. <laughs> she was triple hula hoop, okay. Yeah. But, but she would really lift her toe up. Like yes. she would almost like point her toe up to do it where other people kind of let it drag more in yes. that circle beforehand. And I noticed that Boyan Jin on the quad sao cow had that same kind of Which is good. You want to go through thing. the toe for the extra lift. So I was just I was just so much more aware of that position than I was with a lot of the other like um I don't see that as much with like Javier's. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was interesting. It really like brings my attention down to his feet when he does it. It's it's interesting, yeah. uh, and I did not notice on that him. Uh, I did not notice that on him previously. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I guess it's neither here nor there. But it was yeah. just interesting. Now let's touch on the Americans. Um, Jason Brown, lovely. This was his uh, big performance of the year, unless he skates at the World Championships. But this was his peak performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting into like the late January, February. I think it was beautiful he went back to his old performance mm -hmm. i actually found that i prefer the new music to the old music i was like this is nice but we've seen it i was like a little disappointed very happy not to see the costume he wore at nationals speaking of massages yeah a lot of these free skates are things you could get a massage to yes and that and that's the thing that's missing for an artist as great as jason is it's the arc that's missing yeah and this was again beautiful he doesn't have the shoma arc he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. There's no build to it. And I love when they keep That's saying... That's when we say the generic loveliness, the massage music. The, yeah. Yeah. That lets you just kind of 
mellow out. And it could zone. be on the Calm app that Meryl is always telling us to use right. for her paid sponsorship. Yeah. So I've had a lot of friends tell me about that app recently, which probably says something about me that they feel the need. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Okay. So the one thing I'll say about Jason is that four years later, he he reverts back. So he wanted a consistent performance here because nationals did not go well. Mm-hmm. Grand Prix final was not the best. So they rearranged the jumps to go back to the standard order. Remember, for four years, we've been trying to move the triple axle into the second half and trying to get a quad. Didn't happen. We moved the triple axle back where he does the opening and he does the axles back to back. Right. And like textbook, the second one was under-rotated here. And I thought that it was just interesting that four years later... His technique has not improved. He's back well, to... Where's the learning curve? That's the thing. You know, you see people try new entrances because this mm-hmm. helps with this. I, but I... I think his overall skating is better than he was four years ago. And artistically, he has more soul to it. But technically, I don't think he's that... For I don't think, I don't think he's that much further ahead than he right. was in four years. And I think I... that that's interesting to me. Well, and he had a pretty emotional response to the program after the free skate. And it made me wonder, I mean, all things considered, even the problems with the second triple mm-hmm. axle and things like that. <clears throat> was this emotional because you felt like you achieved something after what was probably a tough, nas- tough nationals? Okay. Um, or maybe, maybe, you know, you're about to enter a new era. I'm Whatever not sure. Is. I could see it going even either way culture. with him. Yeah. yeah. I could see it either way. Yeah. But there was something there was something kind of real in a different kind of way after that that made me wonder. I mean, he skated wonderfully. It was a moment. It was gorgeous. It was It was beautiful. The yeah. spins are stunning. I, I, I it's incredible. But it, it's it almost seems as far as he's going to go. Yeah. At least well, in this situation, but I I don't know. Less in the situation. Uh, I was talking to that technical specialist at nationals who Mm -hmm. firmly believed that it is not out of the realm of possibility for him to land consistent triple axles and get the quad. If you change the timing of the quad and if you change the entrance of the triple axles and because I was curious, Mm -hmm. when have you maxed out the, uh, just the raw ability, Mm -hmm. you know, you can practice something all you want, but if it's clear, somebody's never going to be able to do something. Uh, But this person was pretty, pretty, convinced that it is it is within the realm of possibility but it it would take a very structured series of changes mm. so yeah, i'm curious there uh, i'm not sure um i don't think he's done skating either obviously right. uh, but i don't you know who knows in which genre but uh, max aaron so uh, that was weird charlie white said that he felt very emotional he didn't sound emotional in his voice but he said that he was um perhaps he was uh I felt sad in a different way watching Max. Um, I felt sad that he hasn't made the changes that he's needed to in his career and that he has felt so frustrated and that it's almost like banging your head against the wall. You know, it's like he has had these things that he has needed to address in his skating. He hasn't really addressed them in a productive way. I don't think that he has the... um, we say what you will. Say what you will about Boyan Jin. Boyan yeah. Jin has grown a great deal in yes. his skating since he first burst on the scene, and we were like, "Uh oh." I know. think Max has had a different choreographer just about every year, almost where we've tried to, you know, this person's going to have the answer, this person's going to have the answer, and it's not. It's like a consistent work that hasn't really happened, and a consistent right. improvement in the in the way the approach and everything. And yes, he did more quads here, and that was great, and that was a personal achievement. But he didn't get a personal best here. He finished just short, and to me, it was like. He was given all of this information about what needed to fix, and instead of taking it in, he got angry about it. And that, yeah, that's and that, I mean, it could be so many things, you know, because I'm sure in in something like skating, Mm -hmm. well, look at everybody's got a comment, everybody's a critic. But um, what I tell, I'm so elderly now, I give master classes to universities Mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, I did a lot of competitions, and I said, when you do the competitions and you get your feedback, Mm -hmm. take it with a grain of salt, right? Because everyone has their own baggage. It's always Mm -hmm. coming from something. But if you start to hear the same thing over and over again, then you kind of have to listen. Mm -hmm. Because you could have one judge tell you, 
you you sing too loud and the next judge be like you sing too soft we couldn't hear you mm -hmm. but if the, if a whole panel of nine people at every competition tell you you sing too loud you're probably singing too loud and this is i think the case of max the i think the criticism was actually pretty consistent mm -hmm. and when it's that consistent you do have to listen yeah i think it's just it hasn't worked and it it's sad to me because we there was so much potential um, and so, and he seems like a great guy, yeah. I think. I mean, I know that, you know, there were stories about him being, you know, stubborn and driven in his own way, but... But I think any skater kind of is stubborn. About you know, if you're going to yeah. go in the ice every day, you're pretty stubborn. Yeah. So I think it's just sad, and I think that that comes back to, you know, Tom's approach and everyone's approach and what kind of feedback are you getting on a daily basis um, right. about the components, about the, you know, what is going to improve your skating to the next level, because it... He did not achieve his... I don't think that Max Aaron achieved his ultimate potential because no. it just... No. Um, and I, I think it, it, I think it became personal when it needed to be about the approach and about the work. Well, you're double down also. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to dig your heels in. And, and it was one thing when like someone like Elvis Stoiko did it. Yeah. But Elvis Stoiko was different. Elvis Max... was different. He... Picked music that enhanced it. We could still argue with Elvis until he's blue in the face. He feels very strongly about his way, and that's fine. And he got what he got from the judges. Um, but Elvis never tried to achieve that then through pieces like Carmen or Les Mis or yeah, Phantom. Elvis that didn't get weird, weird with the music. Elvis was true yeah. to who he was, and right. I don't know. I don't know if Max didn't embrace it as much and thought that the music would make the difference versus well, the, at the end of the day, I think through the skating, we don't know who Max is. Yeah. Maybe. And, and what's, you know, Sandra would say, what's authentic to that person? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Jason actually probably loves that music and does feel it and is sensitive. You, you get mm -hmm. a sense of who he is yeah. by skating. And with, even with Elvis, whether it was to our taste or not, mm -hmm you knew he had a sense of mm -hmm. what he was doing. And with Max, even though he was on this technical crusade that often eluded him, uh, I didn't understand what he was trying to say. It's or been who... tough to watch. Yeah. It's been awkward, yeah. difficult to watch. And I'm assuming maybe the end? We, I mean, we've heard... I would think, I don't know, but... It, yeah, you know, I would. I, I don't know. You never know. Someone could always pull out another season, but it seemed like it sounded like the end. But yeah, in his interviews, but I don't. It'd be know. hard to keep going. I think. Um, I think or, with you now with the ladies, I thought the Mariah Bell showed more performance quality here than we've seen in the past. Think about it. She was kind of a girl skating to Titanic in this like unfortunate sea green dress. Um, at Nationals three years ago. I know, like, are you playing the part of the ocean? Like, Yeah. <laughs> From, like, the 7K school, which has that homeschooly vibe to it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she now, like, has the hot French boyfriend, and she's around Adam and Ashley and in L.A. She's that she's much older. Older. Mature, finding a sense of self. She's around she's, older people. And she skates like it on the ice. Even when I don't think that the West Side Story is the best it could be, or Roxy, she still gives a quality that you're like, wow, she's really skating next to Adam and Ashley every day and picking up on what they do well and incorporating mm -hmm. it into her skating. Mm -hmm. um, that, a bit of show. Yeah. What she but doesn't that, do yeah. well, the triple lutz, triple toe, is still in one program, out the next. And, right. And um, it just doesn't seem like she has that ability to... Like, the one thing that Brady Tanell does really well is she sets her direction, she sticks that topic in, and she rotates. You know, and with no. Mariah, it's Ooh, like... No question. You know exactly yeah. every time how clear it is and how it lands, yeah. Mariah, the approach and the, the way, the way and where her... It, it seems like it shifts program to program and, you know... Now, do you think that's maybe her or is that the Raphael thing? I mean... Because also Raphael, yeah, he helped Ashley get that triple-triple back, and it was better than it was for a while. But there's also, they would always try these different approaches. They'd always go on and on about, and it just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. So some of it seems like a little bit of both. Um, okay. I think with her, you know, he said she has to adjust to the technique. And then I, I, I think her competitive mindset has never been as strong as some of the other competitors. Okay. If you go back and you watch, like, when she competed against Gracie and Juniors, you know, she was a bit of a popper or, right. you know, the competitive approach has taken more work with her. Okay. So, but she's gotten a lot better. So I think she should do another year or two and see 
when she's more higher up on the hierarchy in the um, in the rink. And then she's had more experience now. She's been to four continents. She's been to a world. She's, you know, she's a little more seasoned. I think that, um, you know, what can we do with a year or two and then see if you're going to ride out to the Olympics? And or, maybe Shay Lynn or someone who will help encourage that. Yes. Kind of sass factor that it's clear she's itching to give more of. Now. I've never thought that the Roxy program worked for her. It seemed too fast, too slop, like too many limbs, and she put on. It yeah. didn't seem like it started with Mariah. It was like although they she has some sass and personality. The music tempo seemed too fast for her, and yeah, a lot of limbs going on. And she seems like she needs to really get everything set in her technique. I, I mean, this four continents in general, always in an Olympic year. Uh, down. So it's it, it's yeah, it, and it must really be tough to turn around from a nationals. It must be tough to turn around for those that had Olympic dreams. Um, but she seemed to embrace it. Mm -hmm. She seemed to enjoy being out of the clear. Yeah, you know, okay, she was kind of in the conversation for the Olympic team, but not not, not really. so much. Um, so I, I can't imagine she was overly devastated to have not, I'm sure that she wanted to make the team, but you know, it wasn't this like shocking disappointment perhaps mm -hmm. like Jason's was. And uh, I kind of like to see her just be like, well, we're here, just yeah. have some fun. I think she'll yeah. have a good season next year. I tend to think that it's a kind of like a new opportunity, yeah. a new landscape, uh, see what that does. You know, sure. I think she should go yeah. for it. Um, I think she'll move that much further. Um, as far as Star Andrews went, I think this was experience. Um, yeah. I think that they really need to work on the skating skills before any, I mean, talk about the Tarasova class. If she could go there, it's, you know, for Marlboro, Massachusetts. She, she, she can trick you with a couple of the spins because she yeah. hits some very pretty positions and she has great flexibility. But the, the fact that the jumps were so awry here compared to nationals was like, wow, those look like odd, odd mistakes mm -hmm. that were happening. And she has some it factor. To mm -hmm. an extent, but it needs to have it needs to come from the blade as well. And I think that they can pick right music. They make her very current. Her name is Star. She had that viral moment. It feels like they're always chasing it again. But right. I do think that there's something to her. There's a showmanship quality. She's definitely in the right sport. Uh, they just it needs to come. They need to work on the skating skills as they move forward. And I think yeah. that'll help her jumps and help everything else. Uh, I think so. For Angela Wang, it seemed like more of the same. Uh, Correct. Same with Grant. It really just seemed like more of the same. Um, so the top three ladies, let's break this down. My girls. Your girls <laughs> from Japan. Your girls. I love, I love them. That That's why actually for me, for mm -hmm. continents, I was like, Japanese ladies, woo! <laughs> so I've been getting a lot of questions from like lay people or fans and... Amy Russell, who messages us all the time about Brady. Who do you think Brady That's can medal? Right. And I'm like, Brady's going to get a team medal. She made the Olympics. God is good. Be happy. I do not think that Brady Tunnell is going to medal unless... Let's be thankful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Brady's going to medal unless a lot of things happen on that night. I think Brady will be consistent. Right. And everyone else, if they do... do a respectable, great job yeah. representing her country. Yeah. Now, if other people falter, obviously, I think she'll... Be able to take advantage of that like a good romanian gymnast like gina go right. um, just be consistent and you'll have your opportunity yeah. <laughs> so kaori sakamoto uh, this program to me the free yeah because i prefer the short the short doesn't bother me as much as the she free. has a lot of um jumping ability mm -hmm. i feel like we're hanging out in the low eights and components Good mind. Good She's mind. got a good competitive mindset. But when the but, yeah. highlight of your program is literally this, and I'm bored for the rest, yeah. and, and she seems charming, her personality is charming, but the actual program to me is not. Um, right. I think Amelie could be retired at this point. I think... Um, well, I feel like at this juncture, I wonder how much of this success they anticipated and how much this is actually surprising them. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if now they've already have great ideas to implement for next season to get mm -hmm. it more right. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm with you. The, the fact that the components were as close as they were... This is... Um, let's see, what do I say? <laughs> This week in general was like not a favorite week for yeah. Jonathan Byer. It was a down week. It was a dark week. I was going through some stuff. 
And you know what pulls me out of that and gives me inspiration and moves me? Such Not a cleanly landed tr jump. Yeah. It's the toe code, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the beautiful edges, all of these sorts of things that I'm sorry you cannot compare mm -hmm. priorities to to Miyahara's. It doesn't So not I, being I an opera student, right? Not having that. Madam Butterfly is never my favorite when it comes to a long program. It just, to me, yeah. it does it. Although I think it's wonderful and beautiful. I don't think on the ice it is ever translated. Well, I mean, this is, she chose like a splashy piano version instead yeah. of like the big orchestration, which I understood for her. And actually mm. I find it a very tasteful Very rendition. appropriate for her too. Yeah. And, and again, I think, yes, for, also for Sotoko, it's the short program for yes. me. Yes, the that short I love so much. Goes, yeah, yeah, no moment is ignored from the, the from those opening moves. You know, like Boyan Jin, his opening moves. I understand you're trying to like just get a feel and just be calm, but she's doing that in that short, and she opens it. Everything is on one foot. Mm -hmm. Everything is a finished move. Everything is on a deep edge, and then she starts, you know, jumping several seconds later but she gives you such incredible skating right off the bat so Corey, not to be offensive but i would have put satoko ahead because i think absolutely. that absolutely what she does overall is so much stronger even with the difference in the jumps it's just a complete different level in taste and sophistication and style and beauty and so let artistry. let Kaori win on technical yeah. I, of course she should win on technical but yeah. i don't i don't understand why it's a Sotoko five seven going against a six you know it's a five seven, really, it's a five, it, yeah those those components should have been clobbered yeah everyone else not been a point away no it's great and corey she did the maximum of what she can do yeah, and it was great, and it was clean, and it had positive energy, but it just wasn't. Um, yeah. For Maimi Hara, lovely performance, dimmer. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be curious, going forward, how competitive she can be with these ladies. She's consistent, but can she really move forward? I mean, they, they took a big step this season in maturing her look. Yes. They did. And you can see even here... Um, the bangs. Yeah, I feel like sometimes in like Disney dog movies, they always have the one dog that has like the really low bangs and like you can't quite see. And like a little bit when she was waiting for this, like, uh, the, you know, when she was on the leader's couch or whatever, that's what it reminded me of. But there, the the programs did get more sophisticated this season, although still not that magic feeling to it. That the mission we, is dated to me. It's 90s yeah. done, right? But it is not Cinderella. You're right. So it's a step in the right direction, and I'll be very intrigued where they go yeah. next year. But yeah, her skating is really lovely. I think next it, year she could reach the memorable. Christina Gao level of sophistication. Like, we're, we're climbing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that we need to improve in that area. And again, with her components, also very high. A little but high for me. Too close to Satoko's, in, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Now, speaking of ladies and technical and the Russian Junior Championships this week as we wrap things up. I'm with you on Kostrunaya. Trusova to me is a hard one. Uh, yeah. She, she is technically ambitious. I like her competitiveness. But in terms of the actual skating, I have to say... Wait, put next to someone so emotive. And yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause, uh, Kostrunaya also is delivering on a technical level. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I don't... Um, you know, True Silva, I like it. I don't, you know, it's just, I don't think it has the sophistication yet. Um, mm. It's a little forced. It's a little put on. It's a lot of put on in the short. Uh, right. The right. big spender for a young girl, a little inappropriate. Uh, hey, oh my gosh. <laughs> little Abby Lee Miller. Call the parents. That's right. You know. Uh, <laughs> but I have to say, so my girl, Shevakova, looks very... Um, weaker compared to earlier and i don't know if that's just rushing back or the stress of a terry or what it is but um i did not notice so we saw what you sent me the clips of a couple weeks ago yeah. was a test skate yes okay she did not seem and i and i again i hate to talk about a young girl's body like this but she seemed even frailer than she did in that right video. and i think in the light of talking about the ranch and everything that's been going on is maybe what worried me more here. Um, yeah. The thing that I will she say... very weak. Yeah. Or frail. The, the legs and things, I was like, oh my gosh. Because she had more strength 
uh, a year ago when we saw it in April. We saw that program and it was so gorgeous when we saw it for the first time. Um, it was also a little more zoomed in, but I think there was more strength there to the skating. Um, there was more strength to the skating. Uh, when, so the one thing about the backloaded programs and she had the kiss of death is she missed the first one and she could never catch up. So she missed three jumps in a row after she missed the first a one. A fall takes time. And yeah. in those backloaded programs, there is no time yeah. for error. And then can you imagine that, you know, like I was thinking back to like, you know, the cliche like Dick and Peggy commentary in the 90s or something when they'd be like, well, now she's really got to get her head back on her shoulders and focus on this next jump. But there's not any time for her to refocus because she's she's now rushed and, well, and inevitably a domino effect can happen. When you mess up in competition on the ice, your heart races you're you get the emotional and your your mind is going and you're trying yeah, to exactly. get and you're just not skating you know breathing and that's the kiss of death here but i really do think that they probably they this goes into the training that they probably train the back half of these programs don't you think i would have yeah, everyone you, you mentioned that and that made sense to me i was like because of course who else would just train the second half of a program I suppose someone who only has technical content in the second half of their program. Yes, like I would train yeah. the full program and do a choreography lesson on the first half and then just be like do the full program and then start running that back section when they are tired Yeah, until yeah. they have it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. She kind of had the kiss of death and why we don't like these backloaded programs. Well, strategically it went awry and that was rough to see, but... But, you know, I mean, and obviously Zagitova has brought all of this to light and every commentator weighs in on the backloaded element. And um, obviously the, they're going to have to do something at the ISU level because it's trickling down and it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it just seems to be an unbreakable formula, but can really leave you in the dust the minute something goes wrong. Yeah, or we could put That's... Megan in front of it and maybe, um, you know, jumps in the first minute of the program, get one bonus, jumps in the second program, get a second, get a double bonus, a triple bonus in the third. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. Yeah. So Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, Our... but Jonathan, <laughs> I feel like we got through it. We've gotten through four continents and then next week we can regroup and we can look forward to the Olympics and we are here, Jonathan. We are going for it. It has arrived. It is upon us. <laughs> the spotlight has arrived and it's on me, baby. You know, like... <laughs> yes, I th we are ready for it. So what was your moment of Four Continents? I had two. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's also that final lift in Tara and Danny's program mm -hmm. when her legs, you know... And she's like spinning around slowly mm -hmm. as, as, you know, to, to like depict her, you know, like demise. And it was almost, it reminded me of like a beautiful slow-mo movement in like a film or mm -hmm. something that I, I, I don't know. It's just something about it was, I saw it live um, at nationals, but really in this, that position was cool and it just came at the right point. And then in, ending in that kiss it was kind of a moment for me. But sorry, Sutoko is skating, so my moment will always be her short program and every attention to detail and every spin position and just every bit of loveliness that she is. How about you? Maybe Shoma doing that move where it looked like he was picking up something with his arm. Um, I thought that Hawaii and Baker were very nice. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of pulling, stretching here. I That's was, great. I think those good. Those are yeah, good ones. Uh, I, Jason, <laughs> I thought Jason was very lovely and was nice to see. So it a was good for him. Yeah, yeah, I liked it very much. It was very pleasing and yeah, fulfilling. So. Yeah. Well, we want to remind you to have those moments in your own life. Hold an edge and look sexy. <laughs> Pull that but, little suitcase. Do that little thing. Whatever Shoma is doing there, and have a. And maybe don't wear a yellow shirt. Like you don't wear a bumblebee. This is not flight of the bumblebees. Exactly. Hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. Bye. Last round of the team competition to qualify. <laughs> you won't believe this routine. Big reverse head right in. Reverse head front. Unbelievable! <laughs> Big descent coming up here. After her Jaeger front. Here's her final sequence. 
And a tucked over back. All right. 